With the rise of connectivity demands, we are also seeing increased concerns around online security. So what can telcos do to protect their networks and their customers? And how is the industry as a whole tackling these security challenges? To find out, I'm now joined by Samantha Kite, Head of Industry Security at the GSMA, as well as Philip Larby, Lead for the Verizon Threat Advisory Team for EMEA. Thanks both for joining us. So, Samantha, let's start with your view first. What are the top security challenges for mobile operators? Yes, thanks for having me join you. Um, so over the years, there's been a gradual widening of the threat landscape and operators have been facing a lot of challenges around that. Uh, the first and existing challenge is quite telco specific. It's been around interconnected attacks, um, which in part rely on legacy trust relationships between operators. Um, and this has become known that it, we can no longer trust these um, uh, relationships and so the complexities around that technology um, has become quite obvious. There's also been a lot of more attacks on virtualized and cloud hosted infrastructure um, and that is also becoming a part of managing a mobile network um, and a successful attack on such infrastructure can have quite widespread attacks and of significant scale. Another, which isn't probably too telco specific, is ransomware. Um, we're seeing it not just, again, within telco, but wider, and it is having quite a large impact on the industry. And Philip, what do you see as the most pressing obstacles in the industry when it comes to security? Well, uh, the interesting point is, and we, we, I think, as you know, we issued the, the data breach investigations report now every, every year, and that's in its 17th edition. The, the trends that that allows us to take a look at, we of course, we, we cover an awful lot of, of sectors. There's about 15 or 16 sectors that we look at uh, with that, that data set, one of which, of course, is the, the information sector, which is, is picking up telcos. The interesting issue we've, we've seen over the last couple of years is um, the different type of attacks that are being levied at, at separate sectors has, has narrowed um, to a point where we're seeing essentially pretty much the same techniques being um, delivered against all of the sectors. In fact, there's probably six sectors, in, including the information sector, which there is very little differential between them now. Um, but the real worrying trend is something that we call system intrusion. System intrusion is uh, a various, various categorization that, that, that essentially describes the most complex um, usually highly targeted, um, but multiple phase uh, uh, type of attacks when they're delivered. Typically, this is what we see with, with ransomware. So, you know, if we if we particularly focus on on, on the, the telco sector and something that Samantha's just said, the, the, a lot of the threat groups now, when it comes to things like ransomware, they're utterly ambivalent. The, the sector uh, essentially for them is is almost meaningless. So. Certainly one of the things we're seeing with the information sector is they are becoming more targeted, not because they are the telco sector, but just because the general techniques that are being used by threat actors in this system intrusion type attack, usually starting with something like um, social engineering, so phishing, pretexting, leading on to the theft and, and the subsequent use of, of stolen credentials, um, so that they can essentially navigate within an organization and, and making, of course, it far, far more difficult for the defensive infrastructure of the organization to know that it's a, a malicious third party that's using bona fide user account details that's associated with a normal employee. These are the sort of things that, that sadly, they're increasing year and year and year. So, any, nothing that's necessarily specific to the telco sector, but, but, but something very worryingly, the threat groups and the threat actors are, are very, very successfully using just, just across every sector. And what should telcos do to address these challenges? Samantha, let's hear from you first. Yeah, thank you. So currently, there's a number of initiatives that we do within the GSMA. Um, a lot of documents are also produced. So the first of these is quite an important one around governance. It's the baseline con security controls document, which operators can measure against. It's been developed by the Fraud and Security Working Group, which is um, comprised of a number of experts within industry. And they've put together these controls, which cover all parts of the estate. 
Um, another thing that we do is we have the telecommunication ISAC. So that's the Information Sharing and Analysis Centre. And operators use this to share intelligence across the industry on quite telco-specific threats. And this really helps also raise the baseline level, but also allows them to address security issues in real time as they're coming up. Then probably the last thing we do is really collaborating with the industry, governments, regulators to ensure that all aspects of um, the ecosystem are secure and um, yeah, engaged in, in addressing the issues that arise. And Philip, what is Verizon doing to help secure both its networks and also its customers? Well, certainly one of the things we, we, we've had to get get used to is following the pandemic where we saw the very, very substantial movement of the workforce operating far more remotely. Um, that in itself brought a huge amount of, of challenges initially to organizations, but, but essentially it's, it's, it's working with that, that workforce operating remote and the challenges then of that workforce um, essentially connecting in, of course, into group infrastructure via, uh, via uh, uh, protected virtual private networks, so VPN, that in itself it, it, it has, has brought the challenges. So this is where we begin to get into the, into the dynamics of, 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 of SASE, so Secure Access Service Edge, um, and, and organizations needing to, 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 to have assurance around the fact that when you've got the majority of the workforce accessing in remotely, then you've got to have guarantees or well, assurances that, of course, they're going to be able to do that. And, and whether we're talking about the likes of multi-factor authentication that's actually being used for employees that are connecting in, but SASE generally is is allowing with the the, the, the prominence of, 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 of edge computing is bringing that capability so that we're not seeing the latent delays that was happening through through existing old cloud uh, uh, cloud security. So a lot of the focus we're having right now, um, identity access management is, is, is very, very key. Um, knowing the extent to which uh, threat actors are availing themselves via the phishing initially, pretexting, but ultimately into the, the use of credentials, zero trust, particularly again being built into uh, into, into the managed services that, that come through uh, a, a typical SASE solution. So it's really been the evolution of SASE. We've seen so many organizations which are going through that digital transformation process to a point where SASE is really an unavoidable dynamic for them. And if they're going to have that, that degree of assurance around security, then they've got to go through that SASE process. So, Samantha, in your view, how should network operators consider their security strategies in the era of cloud-based communications? And should telcos already have quantum-safe security strategies as well? As I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of challenges around cloud and it is becoming quite significant for operators to deal with. However, it could be as simple as just ensuring that your systems are configured correctly um, and, and keeping on top of that. Um, and then with qu quantum computing, I mean, we're going quite um, into the future there. However, it is something that we are currently dealing with. So the GSMA has a quantum, um, post-quantum task force, which are producing guidelines around, um, you know, uh, cybersecurity challenges presented by that technology. Um, and then the steps that operators need to take to be able to transition to uh, a quantum safe environment. So there is a lot of work happening there. There's also a lot of collaboration with that, that task force, um, as well as uh, standards organizations such as 3GPP, NIST, um, who are doing a lot of work in the space and Etsy. So um, again, collaboration and um, convening where we can the industry to be able to talk about these security challenges. And Philip, what are your thoughts here? Oh, very interesting because I think it's as, as we've, we've just identified it. It's not something that is is generally in the in the here and the now right now. Um, really, we've seen a very promising evolution through uh, the, the involvement of security at a point where um, products solutions are actually being developed. So I think we initially heard the word the buzzword secure DevOps. But we're still not, I think, there where security is right at the very, very heart 
and at the very beginning and contemplated at the very very beginning of when we're seeing new evolutions in in, in technology. So bearing in mind we're not we're, we're not even there yet with 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 the likes of quantum. Then uh, I, I have a concern that we really haven't got to that point where security is really being thought right from the very very beginning. Um, there's still time, of course, because it is still in in its generative state. So um, I would like to think security is con contemplated in a, to a to a greater extent. Um, but as we had, you know, it's not it's not alive and real uh, essentially for for the world at this particular point. Then um, uh, I guess we can only see the extent to which security is contemplated within that. So, it's early days for quantum, but how about security as a service? Is it already in demand from enterprise users? Oh, yes, absolutely. I don't think there's any question. I mean, for, for some considerable time now, um, I think most organizations have realized that there is a requirement via trusted third parties for bringing in uh, security services. So, um, finding an organization that doesn't at this point in time um, utilize the services of a trusted partner, I think would be very, very rare. Um, and I think purely from you know, efficiency, effectiveness, dynamics, um, we see an awful lot of organizations which have historically uh, managed a lot of their security resilience internally. We see an awful lot of that now being uh, effectively uh, uh, subcontracted or, 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 or brought to trusted third parties. So I, I can only see that that's really going to be a growing dynamic. Uh, for you know, for, again, it doesn't matter which particular vert vertical sector that your industry sector that you're in. We're just going to be seeing that more and more. And Samantha, do you agree? And do you think telcos are ready to meet demand in security as a service solutions? I mean, of course, there's a, there's a lot to offer through the telco and through the industry. And so, um, yeah, it's it's something that's definitely out there. I have to say the GSMA um, it doesn't get involved as much on the side of security as a service. Um, however, I know a lot of the operators have great managed services and um, options out there for securing um, and supporting the ecosystem to, to stay secure. Samantha and Philip, it's been a pleasure to speak with you today. Thank you for your insights. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you very much. Very much enjoyed this. Thank you.